Hello everybody and welcome back to Suzerain. So in the last episode, we pretty much got started with trying to get on our way to our authoritarian right-leaning playthrough. And now we're going to read the report in Whole Sword. So let's see what we got here. Public opinion report. People's views on the need for democratic reform in the government structure has changed over the last decade. Reformist propaganda from the leader of the People's Freedom and Justice Party, Franz Richter, have resulted in massive in a massive increase in the demands for democratic reforms. It is estimated that currently 55% of the population supports the reformist ideas. Okay. We also have a report down here in Dare. It looks like there's an airport down here too. Increasing homelessness. The region of Bergia is among the worst hit regions in Sortland where homelessness has skyrocketed since the economic recession. The number of homeless in the city of Dare is more likely to have increased by 25% in the last year. The rise was particularly stark among bluish people, where homelessness increased by 72% in just six years. It is reported that homelessness among ethnic minorities has reached the highest level in more than a decade. The bluish minority of the region now accounts for up to 47% of all homeless people there. So. That's going to be a, a big, gigantic problem. So I don't think we have any other notifications here. I think everything else is just in the capital. We also have some news here. So as the story goes along, you're going to have different reactions from the different newspapers. You're also going to have to be mindful of where the information is coming from because You'll see, for instance, from like the radical, it's a left winning, it's left leaning newspaper. So they're naturally going to be more critical of conservative politics. The same way with the economists, they're going to be naturally more critical of anti-capitalist things and stuff like that. Geopolitical, from what I remember, didn't really have any, um, any particular leanings, if I'm not mistaken. Sortland today is a bit interesting. They kind of remind me of Fox News, essentially. So it's purely dependent upon how the um, head of Swordland today feels about you. But again, we'll get into more of this later. And the whole Sword Post is just pretty much reporting things. So, Rain emphasizes Swordland's dire situation. The president, ah, okay, hold on. Let's scroll this down so we got everything right here. President Anton Rain has been sworn into duty in a great ceremony in Hosword. Thousands have attended the ceremony where President Rain has met with his supporters for the first time after his election. In his inauguration, Rain spoke about the current dire situation, bringing focus on the suffering of Swordish people. We are enduring economic hardship like never before, and today our nation is falling apart, said the new president before he went on to start his first day in the Marine in the Maroon Palace. Okay, maybe it wasn't the best speech I've given. A committee for reforms. Speaker Gloria Tory said that a committee which included all three political parties of the assembly has been formed for the preparation of potential changes to the constitution. The committee has been asked to submit a comprehensive report to find a solution for the current problematic state of affairs in the government institution. Tory said, USP wants to appeal to the people of Sorland to help in maintaining stability and order in the state. The details of the committee regarding its actual topics or its members have not been clarified. Okay, so that's all we got there. Sortland today, President Anton Rain. Let's see what they say. Sortland most sold newspaper, Heart of Sortland. The new president has been sworn into office by the Chief Justice Orso Hawker. Another great win for the USP and Anton Rain, who managed to get 37% of the general vote. The first congratulations came from Kazaro Kibner of the National Front Party. The runner-up of the general vote, the PFJP, didn't, con didn't concede until the last minute despite clear results just hours into the election. Thousands of supporters have gathered in the streets of Holsor chanting campaign slogans, waving flags, and displaying USP party banners to display unwavering support to the newly elected president. The public mood is very positive in the capital from all accounts on the ground. The city is celebrating that a Lechevner has become the president of, of Swordland. Interesting. So I don't remember things being so favorable to me initially. And I wonder if some of that is based off of some of the choices I made in the beginning. Also, I don't remember if Kazaro Kibner actually congratulated us first. Also, uh, it's kind of nice about this. Uh, PFJP didn't concede until the last minute. Definitely hadn't heard that here in the United States. Okay, to the Lechaven Times. 
the new assembly begins duty. President Anton Rand has been elected fourth president of Swordland in the seventh Swordish elections. The United Swordland Party has won the election on the Sunday with just over 37% of the vote, while Franz Richter, the leader of the People's Freedom and Justice Party, could gain just over 20%. Kassaro Kibner, the head of the right-wing National Front Party, is in third place with just over 11%. The Communist Party of Sorland and the Workers' Party of Lubia both won just below 10% of the vote, failing to pass the 10% election threshold. The new term begins with the opposition of PFJP and NFP under the USP government. The unrepresented votes below the threshold resulted in the USP taking 52% of the seats in the Grand National Assembly, giving them the lawmaking power. The new seats numbers have been finalized as follows. USP 130, PFJP 70, NFP 40, and Independence 10. So as you can see, the system is a little unfair, just a tad. So, support in assembly grows for campaign finance bill. A bill to change the criteria for the allocation of public funds to political parties is proposed by Representative Albin Clavin from the USP. The bill aims to change the criteria from the proportion of votes won in general elections to proportion of seats won by a political party in the Grand National Assembly. This would result in an increase of about 28 million uh, SRs to the governing United Swordland Party, which will benefit the most from the proposed bill. The new bill would give political parties an annual amount of 500,000 SR per member of assembly. So yeah, again, uh, more shenanigans running from my party. Swordish National League starts season. A very exciting day marks the Swordish National League. Uh, kicks off with the SK Lechaven versus Ben VFC match. The league consisting of nearly 10 teams has been gaining more and more popularity in recent decades, with tickets dropping significantly, significantly in prices leading to increased accessibility. Football fans are looking forward to one of the key events of the league, the match of the two most com uh, competent teams, Enrica and Gelsword. Interesting that they actually have articles. Okay, it's for the cities. So, okay, cool. And there's Gelsword. And it's the capital of the Gelsland region. Interesting, interesting. Okay. And let's go to the radical. They are not going to be happy. They're just not happy in general because, you know, they don't want another USP president, but, you know, they'll get over it. How many times will people fall for the same trap? We've seen this before with Colonel Soul, who supposedly saved this country and brought stability in times of chaos. His stability, however, meant a life of oppression. Any opposing voices were silenced and many were persecuted. Next was Alfonso, who was elected as the liberal reformer to bring change to the USP in Swordland. Seeing his unfortunate inability, his own cabinet resigned. As the third USP candidate becomes president, it is high time to realize that real change won't come from their party. Ah, yes. Cries in the two-party system of the United States. And from The Economist, restructuring the infrastructure. After the recent successful mega infrastructure project from the United Contana and Vogsland, the world is warming up to the idea as a source of growth and employment. Uh, can I get you to pop up? Thank you. The world is warming up to the idea as a source of growth and employment, but is there any truth to this success? Our investment analysis indicates that infrastructure investments can be fruitful in the short term, but even more so in the long term, especially if they focus on linking economic nodes that business logistics depend on. This is, however, the first step. The crux of the matter is diversification of investments where the government supports employment and growth. It is key to help private businesses with government contracts, tax breaks, and political support in order to create a self-sufficient, dynamic economy. The government's role in Swordland should be to integrate to the world economy and reap the benefits of global trade. Economic growth and income equality in this country won't be fixed otherwise. And we have an article for Sin, uh, in Solonomics. A new era begins for Swordland and it holds many economic questions that will need to be answered by President Rain. Our top economic analysts with uh, consultation from the National Business Council have released a comprehensive report on the performance of the past 20 years. A certain section of the report stands out. The last two four-year plans of the plan doctrine created a budget deficit and a clear reduction of the industrial production output. 
This was specifically due to the mismanagement and inefficient bureaucracy. The year-on-year -year growth, budget balance, and production index values indicate that the two most productive consecutive years had been when the privatization program of Alfonso began in 1949. Our editorial team, with the help of experts like Mikhail Avon and Edith Agnock, have come to the conclusion that the recession was not actually caused by Ewald Alfonso's bold privatization program, but by the drastic obstructions of state executives hindering the plan. President Rain must take the advice of planned economy proponents around him with a pinch of salt, otherwise he could find himself in the same spot of Tarquin's soul in the mid-40s. Okay. And from the geopolitical situation, Bloomberg coming south. Our foreign policy analysts who are reviewing the recent aggressive military and diplomatic developments of Bloomberg have come to the conclusion that it is highly likely that Bloomberg will keep trying to push further south, threatening the territories of Swordland, Wayland, and possibly Agnolia. The annexation of Dome many decades ago, who just the who who just was just the beginning. Jesus Christ, I can't see. Bloomberg seems to have been on a quest to secure all strategic resources in East Marcopa. So yeah, Bloomberg is gonna be a problem. So, and I am all about trying to fight them, even though they're probably gonna win, but we'll see. Okay, so let us dive into more politics. Uh, we'll deal with the media strategy here in a little bit. We'll deal with the current economic situation first. In the white room of the Maroon Palace, Simon Hall, Gus Manger, and Lelis Gaff, these beautiful individuals, were about to arrive at the white room for our scheduled economy meeting. This was the room, this was the room in the Maroon Palace where all important meetings were held. The two assistants have arrived carrying a heavy projector they stood with it by the door, waiting for the ministers to enter. From the hallway, I heard Lilius Graf's voice. She was using the patient, almost motherly tone she often took in heated arguments. Gus, do you really think that such an economically advanced area is more in need of investments than Aglan? Lilius, my interior minister, strode in. She was clad in shades of brown and beige, the only spot of color, a bright yellow nourished star on her necklace. Gus followed close behind. Don't think I've heard that term, nourished. I believe that is the religious faction in this game. Um, I don't think I remember anything in the demo about that, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be a problem at some point in time. Don't be an idiot, Lilius. What about the unemployment crisis in, I mean, the unemployment crisis the greater whole sword and Gelsland regions are going through? These areas are our economic heartland. Gus curled his hands into, into fists. The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development temper hadn't changed since his days in the, in the Alfonso administration, but neither had his reputation for getting things done. His far-reaching network of connection was unlike any other. Simon Hall quickly stepped between the two ministers without looking at either of them. He cleared his throat. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, everyone. Uh, actually, I want to know what this debate is about. Just a disagreement in internal economic strategy, President Rain. Not sure if I would call it just a disagreement, Lilius. Uh, let's see. Okay, it's Minister of Rural Development, Minister of Interior, Minister of Economy. Hmm. Let's begin the presentation. Yes, I will move forward with my presentation if no one objects. Please, go ahead. Simon pulled a silk handkerchief out of his pocket and briefly wiped his glasses. I don't remember if Simon was there in the demo, but we'll see. My staff and I have, com have comprehensively analyzed every aspect of, he was interrupted by a groan from one of the assistants by the door both of whom were now visibly struggling to hold up the heavy projector. Oh, you can put that there. He pointed below the painting of President Soul. The assistants placed the projector next to the table and installed a white screen on the wall. Leave now. I mean, thank you, and please leave now. 
The assistants left the cabinet room. I was reminded that Simon had never quite had a way with people, but his facility with his facility with numbers had made him the most sought-after economic specialist in Swordland. Hmm, interesting. Simon th started looking for his slides. He always carried documentation around with him. Uh, I'll wait. At least learned, leaned to the table and spoke. Simon, what happened to the new police station construction in Estord? While going through his briefcase, he paused for a moment to answer. It got stalled due to a government property boundary issue. I've been meaning to look at it. I can take a look at that one. Estord needs all the security help it can get. Sure, what time for me to spend on analysis? His eyes glittered when he finally found the slides he were looking for. There have been some developments about the Swordish Wren losing further value today. We've been trying to stabilize it with the central bank. The recession of 51 put enormous pressure on the economy, resulting in the collapse of the value of our currency. The entire situation was a significant cause of concern for our administration. Since economics is your forte, Mr. Rain, it is possible that you might already be aware of the data. I can still explain the current economic situation in better detail. Thank you for acknowledging my skill. I don't know if that was a thing before. Uh, what is our GDP and debt situation? Our current GDP is 310 billion Swedish friend and the national debt is 427 billion. It's still hard to fathom that we lost nearly 150 billion in wealth. The past three years were tough. What is our unemployment and inflation rate? Unemployment has skyrocketed and is now at a staggering 16%. The inflation is at a relative high of 7%. Unemployment is increasing crime and drug use. We need to get people off the streets. The inflation isn't helping our average citizen either. Uh, let's see, what is the status of the recession? The economy has been in a recession of about negative 6% in the past year. The average GDP has dropped from uh, 15,454 sortish rents per capita to 10,359 rents from 1951 to now. Jesus. This administration's success depends on our ability to stop the recession. The sooner we can reach GDP growth, the better. I have all the information needed. Let's move on to the economic strategy. Yeah, a lot of that. I just, I'm not an economist, so I only know so much of that. Simon scattered the paper stacks, uh, stack in front of him in an orderly manner and took a final look at his notes before clearing his throat. As you can see, the situation is alarming, but not everything is negative. The extensive privatization program of Alfonso left us a large budget surplus, which we can use to, to stabilize the crisis. The primary subject we need to settle on is what general path we will take in our term. Solonomics based nationalization happened in the 30s and Alfonso's privatization began during the end of the 40s. What will our administration focus on? One of our main promises was to promote a free market economy to stop the recession. To be frank, I believe it is the only way out of the recession. I still do not support it. Why promote the private sector when we have qualified state-owned enterprises? Yeah, I don't know about that. That's kind of, uh, I think one of the state-owned companies I've seen so far was kind of sus, but you know. Because the lack of competition has made them inefficient. Simon nodded. So Gus and Simon agree on certain things. Let's see, what are the consequences of the free market? There are not many, but one could say that we are much more likely to be influenced by the world economy. It is important to think about this subject because the upswings of the world economy will reflect good on ours too. Yes, and when the global economy crashes, we go down with it. The structural problems of solonomics were going to lead to a recession according to the predictions at the time anyway. Either way, even if we pick one of the doctrines, we retain the option to make economic choices on a case-by-case -case basis. That is, however, not, not recommended in my point of view. The last thing we need is a chaotic economic plan. Finally, something we both can agree on, Lilius. There's another important point which has direct impact on our economy, superpowers. We might have won the election, but I'm still against aligning ourselves with any superpowers. 
economically speaking, we are much more closer to Arcasia than United Cantana, so a decision to align to the West makes more sense. We must be very cautious. There are schemes being devised about Sorlin. We cannot give in to their wants now or in the future, otherwise our country will turn into a pawn. I want you to reconsider your promise to align with Arcasia. Oh, okay. And I don't think that was a thing in the demo, but I don't know if I actually said that I was going to align with Arcasia originally. Um, I'm still going to stay on that path. I still want to work with Arcasia. I am a little worried now of what that actually means. Like, can I, are they going to just really kind of influence and kind of bully their way, their way in and I'm going to be kind of screwed and I'm just going to do whatever they say. Or can I just let a little bit of them in and then see how it goes? But we'll see. Uh, let's see what we have here. I've made promises to the people of Sorland. I won't back down. Don't worry. I won't let Arcasia control Sorland. Entering the sphere of Arcasia will help boost our economy in many ways. They are wealthy and influential. You may be right. Let's see what the future brings. I am going to say entering the, the sphere of Arcasia will help boost our economy in many ways. They are wealthy and influential which I'm pretty sure is going to make my wealthy benefactors later on very happy, which will also make me happy because they'll give me money and influence. Exactly. I think I like to think of it as a very valuable partnership. With the deals we will get by aligning ourselves with a strong country like Arcasia, recessions would surely end in no time. In return for what? Sortland's independence? When the time comes, I hope you will make the right decision. For our own good. That does worry me. I'm like I said, I'm pretty worried about Sorlin's independent. Simon cleared his throat again. Let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Minister Whis Whiskey will be in charge of informing you on these types of foreign policy decisions. We must first decide on our internal economic plan. Simon put forward a legal document outlining the possibilities with both economic doctrines listed. The cabinet members looked at me. We have to thank Seoul and his planned economy for the boom. It clearly shows the success of the system. No. Let's finish what Alfonso started with the capitalist free market reforms. His path was going to enrich Swordland. Hmm. What's our long term economic schedule? Would a free market focus bring us stronger allies? So, yeah, I'm going to go with Alfonso's strategy. We're going to keep going with the capitalist free market reforms. And stay on that path. The recession was the direct result of his free market reforms. History must note that the reason for the recession was because Ewald Alfonso was betrayed by his party. I had nothing to do with it. That's not true. There were plenty of time there was plenty of time for him to do it. If you can't make change happen in two years, then you're you are at fault. <laughs> Now, that's kind of rough there. <laughs> Two years is pretty quick, but I guess it kind of depends on the situation going on in general. Plus, that is kind of the catch-22 of capitalism in general, is that you kind of, you have to rely on everybody else. So when you're a part of global, the global economy, you can go down just as quickly with everybody else, no matter how good your economy is. Uh, what's on our long-term economic schedule? Picking a construction company, trade relations, tax reform, and privatization initiative would be some of them. Sticking to a solid planned economy strategy will be the right call. The five-year plans were fruitful in the past. Would a free market focus bring us stronger allies? It would make Arcasia look at our country in a more positive light. They are proponents of the free market economy. The influence Arcasia has on the world economy is extensive. Our economic strategy should be based on internal reasoning, though. All right, let's move on. What are your final thoughts, Mr. Then, Mr. President? Uh, let's see. We should look at opportunities like privatization to create financial resources. A market economy doesn't require as much guidance and could help us attract foreign capital. It's hard to fully agree or disagree with these options. Hmm... Um, Hmm. Uh, 
I think this is more of a halfway type of saying. We should look at opportunities like privatization to create financial resources. A market economy doesn't require as much guidance and could help us attract foreign capital. And I do like some capital, so let's do that. Especially from Arcasia, President Walker is always interested in expanding the economic zone of NATO. I mean, oh God, NATO. <laughs> The not NATO, the Arcasian Treaty Organization, not to be confused with the North Atlantic Trade Org ah, Treaty Organization. So, what will our general economic plan promote? Uh, promote a free market economy as we promised. Let me see, Lillian, Lilius Graf, I can't say that I agree with this. Lilius looked displeased. Now that there's clarity on which direction we are heading, I will work on a good plan accordingly. This concludes our meeting. In our next gathering, we will talk about the upcoming infrastructure investment plan. Now that the economic direction was taken, the ministers dispersed for lunch at the Maroon Palace. Okay, so we've made our first kind of decision there. We've decided to go on the path of a free market economy. Okay. Also over here, I see that this is a lot more filled out than it was originally. I think in the previous one, um, yeah, during the actual demo, there wasn't a whole lot of information about him. I don't even think he had a first name, but uh, yeah, this is a lot more fleshed out. A lot more fleshed out. But again, we'll get into these things much later on when we actually have to deal with these people. But for now, they're kind of a distant threat or possible ally. Let's see. Read the report from Morna, increasing unemployment. The number of people filling, ah, filing for unemployment in Morna continues to rise as the recession continues. The change in economic conditions is historic and stunning in its speed, said the mayor of Morna. In the aftermath of the crisis of 1951, the, the unemployment rate in Mourner reached 9% in 1952, a year after the financial crisis. The last six months have almost erased all gains in employment over the last two decades. Good God. This is basically a depression. All right, from Gil Sword, Infrastructure Report. The recession led to a reduction in rail assets, with more than a fifth of the railway network, itself antiquated, being mothballed in the recent years. While the main lines of the railway network are currently in service, increasing demand in goods from Gelsor to the capital is pushing the network to its limits. The rail signaling system in the region dates from the middle of the last century and is also in need of improvement. Good grace. Okay. Definitely need some modernization there. And from Sarna, promising agriculture growth. For the first time in three years, the agricultural output of Sarna has increased. Many experts link it to both a drop in temperatures and new farming practices that have been adopted in recent years. Additionally, farmers are now accessing more generous credit allowances from the government that were left over from the Alfonso administration. The Ministry of Agriculture reports that the agricultural industry of the region has the potential to become a powerhouse in the future if investments persist. So we might want to look at investing in this region so we can get this kind of agricultural boost. I'm pretty sure we're also going to need those resources for war if that becomes a thing. Okay. Read the report from Linkerg, Infrastructure Report. The recent collapse of the tourism industry in Linkerg has led to a reduction in trade traffic and road maintenance. The road network is currently in service, but it it is in need of substantial improvement. Ports, country roads, and bridges similarly suffer from a lack of investments. Firms doing business in Linkerg report a significant shortage of warehouse facilities, particularly refrigerated facilities with implications both for the transportation system and the ability to serve the population's basic food and health needs. I'm also worried just because Bloomberg is right there. They could cause problems if they turn around and get into this region and they could isolate it. Also, it could probably be a problem because if Roomberg can kind of start a rebellion or something there, we wouldn't be able to get there. It's 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 a lot of problems just in general. 
Okay, we gotta deal with the media strategy, but we also have something else over here. Invest in mega infrastructure. A decision to invest in one of the two planned mega infrastructure projects. We'll deal with that in a second, but let us deal with the media strategy first. Office of the President of Swordland, Maroon Palace. Let's deal with this. Lucien and Peter arrived at my office to talk about the recent developments and the media strategy. They both took their seats across from me. Lucien put on his reading glasses and quickly went over some documents. Peter turned to Lucien and nodded. Let's begin. First of all, Lucien, you mentioned that Marcel Coronti contacted you. The Corontis has always been known as one of the richest and most influential families in Sorland. Marcel Coronti was no exception. He was the oldest son of Conrad Coronti, the industrialist and media mogul who founded Heart of Sordland, the richest man in the entirety of Sordland. So he's definitely not Rupert Murdoch. Lucien turned to me. He has offered to meet with you, Mr. President. Hmm. Why does he want... I mean, what does he want? Well, after the passing of his father, may he rest in peace, Marcel aims to become the next CEO of the Heart of Swordling conglomerate. He mentioned a productive collaboration. They are powerful and influential media conglomerate. To start with, they own the Sortland Today newspaper, the Sortless Broadcasting Corporation, the so which means it would be wise to have them by our side. Sorry for interrupting. What does this productive collaboration entail? I like collaboration. That's why I'm president. He did not wish to explain the details over the phone, but rather in person. I believe I will be receiving a call from him sometime soon. However, as Peter said, they have substantial power over the content of media outlets, headlines, radio shows. That is what he would be offering. What he wants in return is what we need to understand. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, we need to determine our general approach to the media. I have far less expertise in the matter, but very interesting arguments were made by Lucien at the preparation meeting yesterday. There are two ways we can approach the media. One of them is by influencing it which has clear advantages, and the other one is keeping it independent. Oh, no. Nope, I don't believe in independent media at all. This is all about me trying to look as good as possible. So the media is a tool to be used. I agree. Media plays a huge role in adapting public opinion towards our views and policy. Boy, does it ever. While I do acknowledge that this will sound a bit harsh, I certainly believe that we possess the perspective, knowledge, and experience to have the superior judgment compared to a normal citizen's citizen living his daily life. Hmm. I share your opinion. A crowd of people can be really stupid. I concur, even if we don't use it to let us have control over it. You all are aware of my certain expertise with public opinion swaying. I will make sure the media be I will make sure the media is on our side. Two knocks were heard on the door. Uh who is it? It's Livia, Mr. President. Ah oh, yes. Monica I mean Livia Suno is the private secretary of President Anton Rain. She is tasked with directly handling most of the critical calls, scheduling, and paperwork from the president. I just got a bad feeling about her in general. I don't know what it is, but I just got a bad feeling. Livia Suno, my new secretary, entered the office. Her dark curls bounced as she crossed the room to my desk. She spoke with a slight lift, lilt in her voice. Excuse me, Mr. President. Mr. Gallard's secretary has been calling me and wanted me to relay a message. Marcel Coronti, the new CEO for Heart of Swordland Conglomerate, is on the line for Mr. Gallad. Oh, the ball's in our court now. Would you like to talk to him, sir, or would you like me to? Ah. Interesting. Now, normally I would say I would go ahead and talk to him directly. But I feel like since I'm going to be doing shady stuff, I need to have as many people in between 
myself and the illegal actions that I'm doing. So I'm gonna let him do it. Plus, maybe it'll let him feel like he's, you know, he can do certain things and then if something happens, I can just throw him up on the bus. So you go ahead, connect the line to my office. Right away, sir, connecting the call to line one. Olivia left the room and the phone started ringing. Lucien picked up the phone and started to listen. A few minutes passed as the two talked over the phone. Good news indeed. Congratulations, Mr. Coranti. Thank you for contacting me about this. We will talk later. Lucien and Galad put the phone down. It was so important that it couldn't wait. He was just elected to be the CEO by the board of directors. He offered a partnership deal regarding his media branch. He's inviting us to his resort near Corneriot for a meeting. The board has decided rather quickly. It seems that it seems that gave him the confidence to approach us again. He's going to offer a real deal and now has the power of the conglomerate too. The choice is up to you, Mr. President. I can set up the meeting soon. Hmm, Peter, what is your opinion? Even though I honestly don't care about it. I must say that I'm torn. If he has become the CEO, then he has an enormous influence. Uh, he has enormous influence now. On the other hand, do we want to privately meet with someone we don't fully know? I mean, you're not wrong. The meeting would help us figure him out. We could still say no to whatever he offers. Hmm. Arrange the meeting with Mr. Coranti. I'll set things up right away. Expect a worthwhile meeting next month. It is settled then. Looking forward to the meeting next month. Lucien looked at his watch. Looks like we ran out of time for today. We will continue where we left off later. Thank you for your time. Uh, good work with Marcel. Keep it up. Lucien and Peter nodded before gathering their documents and promptly leaving my office. We were already getting the attention of key and potentially dangerous figures. Oh yeah, I'm all about some danger. And Jesus Christ, there are seven things we need to look at. Okay. Oh, so the Codex, act, it actually updates as things happen. Interesting. Okay. So wait, what year is it? Okay. Yeah, I like that, that it updates as things goes along. It's interesting. Okay, Conrad Coranti passed away. The first and most important modern entrepreneur Solon has ever seen has sadly passed away today. People looked up to Conrad Coranti as a figure of success, respect, and wealth. After his immediate passing, his son, Marcel Coranti, took over his title as, as the new CEO of the Heart of Solon conglomerate. Okay, they know about our economy meeting. Also, thank you for that. Um, before in the in the demo, you couldn't really tell what you had read before, but now as you can see, it's grayed out. We've already read that, so that's nice. I like that. Uh, economy meeting held in, in Hosord. Contacts close to the government report that yesterday, Sortland's economic policies have been planned behind closed doors. Shortly after the meeting that was also attended by President Rain, the Ministry of Economy has released a statement regarding their short-term econ economic plans, which include the promotion of a free market economy. So that should make some of uh, that should make Arcasia a bit happy. All right, the Lachavin Times: Freezing temperatures recorded. The Meteorological Institute has reported the the record low temperatures of minus 29 in the city of Uthrin. A warning for frostbite has been issued in the cities of Southern Bergia. People are advised not to go out unless they have a do, they have to due to a risk of frostbite. Schools are closed for this period. Okay. Nothing too big there. The glamorous inaugural ball. Oh boy, here we go. They're going to be so ticked off. The whole sorts elite gathers for a lavish state ball. Many citizens in the country are uncertain about their own future, but the state has no problems with wasting, with, ah, wasting, wasting taxpayers' money right from the start. We demand that these traditions of wasteful nature uh, will become a thing of the past once the president settles in. The, the team here at the Radical will keep fighting for a better, more equal tomorrow for all. Okay, all right. 
Nationalist violence. A man in his 20s has been beaten with a baseball with baseball bats in a paramilitary style attack in Arvory. The man claims to have been attacked because of his ethnic background as an agno sortis citizen. He, he was approached during a walk in the park by a group of right-wing national extremists who are suspected of being regulars at the local National Front Party office. The group inflicted injuries to his legs and arms, police said. The man was brought to the hospital after making his way to a nearby uh, property. The police service of Arvory said it was a brutal attack for which there is no justification. There's no place for attacks such as this in our society, said Eric Neal, mayor of Arvory, and called for unity and urged restraint from the populace. Okay, so as you can see, political violence is starting to heat up a little bit. Uh, Armadine Industries pioneering electronics. Interesting. A new prototype for the first pocket radio was displayed by the Arcasian Electronics Company, Armadine uh, Industries, in Ventry City. After six years of research and the engineers behind the pocket transistor radio have revealed that the material science questions regarding the composites have been solved. The company is now filing the patents for the products. The CEO of Armadine Aaron Bridges is predicting an IPO at VCSE in the upcoming years. In a bid to raise further investment, Mr. Bridges has called for all venture capitalists who believe in the future of science and technology in the marketplace to invest in the company. The president of Arcasia, Dwight Walker, praised the bright minds of Arcasian engineers following the announcement and called for further technological advancement for the military industrial complex. Interesting. So I wonder if this is going to be a thing at some point. Maybe we can allow Armadon Industries to, or we can provide them with resources or something like that in order to get a nice little lucrative uh, trade deal there. So hmm, we'll see. Geopolitical. Uh, Swordlands Regional Trade. As the Reign administration starts its first term, there's a question in all our heads. What will be the regional international trade policy? Due to the strategic geopolitical location of Swordland, historically, Agnolia and Wayland have been natural trading partners. Depending on the direction of the Reign administration, we think it's likely that a new trade deal will be brokered with at least one of these partners in the near term. All in all, regardless of which trading partners the administration decides to go with, one thing's for sure. Regional trade will boost the ailing economy. The real question is, what does Vogsland and Lesbia think about Swordland? This is true. This is true. All right, so we have trade deals to deal with. Trade must flow. Okay, what do we have in the capital here? Campaign finance bill. We read about this in one of the news articles, and now we're going to have to deal with it. Read the report from Holsor, party committee report. The reform committee reported that any potential change to the Constitution in the direction of the reformists will likely result in strong opposition from the National Front Party. Most members of the United Swordland Party also seem reluctant about supporting such changes. Additionally, the chief, the chief strategist of the president, Lucien Gallard, reports that the solace politicians and the chief justice of the Supreme Court are willing to talk about a potential alliance. You know, <laughs> again, that's something else that would kind of be unseemly here in the United States. Not saying it doesn't happen, but it'll be a little weird that if uh, we just basically went out and was just like, oh yeah, we're talking to the Supreme Court to just be like, yeah, uh, we, we're going to see if we can work something out. Yeah, that would be highly suspect. Yeah, I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but it would be highly suspect. Okay. So now that we've dealt with that, let's go ahead and deal with this campaign finance bill. Now, if I remember correctly, I think I'm going to have to approve it because I think it uh, helps me in particular keep my power. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, what was it in? It wasn't in Soil Today. What's in the whole sort of post? Committee for Reform. Nope, not there. New Assembly begins today. Yeah, the Campaign Finance Bill. So let's see here. Mmm. So yeah, I need to approve this bill, if I remember correctly, because that would increase how much money I get, so. The Grand National Assembly of the Republic of Swordland 
at the first session begun to held the city of Swordland, uh, whole sword i cannot read the rest of that electoral campaign finance bill the criteria for the allocation of public funds shall no longer be according to the number of votes won in the general election by a political party the new criteria shall be the proportion of seats won by a political party in the assembly political parties shall receive an annual amount of 500,000 rand per member of assembly this results in a doubling of the usp election budget and a slight increase in the other parties in the assembly while effectively removing all funding from parties that are below the 10 percent uh, election threshold so i'm going to go ahead and sign that also that'll kind of prevent the communists and the bluish uh party from even remotely thinking about getting power because they're going to have to get their funding from somewhere else which will probably mean, probably mean outside sources so let's go ahead and sign that All right, let's see the reactions from this. The whole sort of post electoral funding reform. Let's go ahead and scroll this down a bit. The campaign finance bill has been signed into law by President Rain after the approval of the Grand National Assembly by majority vote on Friday following a three hour debate. Friends Richter, who objected to the funding package, say, saying it contained too much unfairness in the allocation of the budget, also sought to delay proceedings by demanding a formal recorded vote, but was overruled. The new law brings small changes to the criteria for the allocation of the campaign budget and introduces no changes to the total amount of public funds reserved for the political parties, which stand at 100 million rent. All right, USP hijacks elections. <laughs> Again, they're not going to be happy with me for a lot of the things I do. So, But we have Swordland today. Uh, soon we'll have Swordland today, the, the number one most fair and balanced news organization a new law that further expands on the unfairness of our election system has been approved by the grand national assembly and was signed into law by president rain the new law changes the rules of eligibility of the public funds that are reserved for every political party in swordland previously the funds were given on the basis of the number of votes in the general election with these changes the funds will be given on the basis of the of the number of seats the political party holds which eliminates every party apart from the three that are currently in the assembly this insane law has res also results in the governing United Soilland Party share from the funds to increase double. As Anton Rain's presidency, presidency begins, we at the Radical are already smelling the rot in whole sort. Oh, trust me, it's not right. It's so much worse than rot. You have no idea how much worse it is. So Now let's look at the mega infrastructure things. All right. The Ministry of Economy has put forward two bold plans for mega infrastructure projects that would help with the economic recessions in the long term. Investing in projects of this scale would take up some portion of our budget, but could prove worthwhile if accomplished successfully. Now, if I remember correctly, I think I want to do this uh, because I think one of them is one of the trade ports. Now, I could save the money. But I plan on working with Arcasia, and I'm pretty sure they'll be sending me some funds and stuff like that. But yeah, we'll invest in the mega infrastructure project, which will be minus one from the government budget. Again, curious on what that means. I'm curious on if I can run a negative or anything like that. We'll see. Government budget decreased. All right. Discussion of the potential infrastructure projects, the Blue Mansion and La Chaven. The view towards the Marquian Sea from La Chaven was nothing sort short of exquisite. The seaside state resi uh, residence, fittingly named the Blue Mansion, was large, fine, and accommodating. But enjoying the luxurious mansion wasn't the main reason of our visit. We gathered the economic team here to discuss the new infrastructure investment projects. Half an hour had already passed since the start of the meeting. Unfortunately, I did not have the chance to have my usual afternoon coffee. Looking at the view from the windows, I let my mind drift for a couple of seconds. Simon's voice brought me back into the ongoing discussion. Mr. President, we need to focus on boosting the economy as quickly as possible. One of the fastest ways to achieve this is through infrastructure projects. Uh, let's see, agreed. On the one hand, businessmen are complaining about the slow logistic, logistical rail network between Holsord and Lechaven. Lilia started talking as soon as Simon took a breath. 
On the other hand, citizens are criticizing the lack of proper highway connection between the Chaven and Arvory. The narrow roads by the seaside are not only dangerous, but also uh, difficult to traverse. We need to heed the calls of the businesses in these days of recession. We need to pick the most profitable option for the economic growth. The citizen and their demands matter the most. We're going to pick the most profitable option for economic growth. Which is obviously connecting our two most economically powerful cities. It is not the business people that suffer, but the ordinary folk. What really matters, though, is that we can accomplish something tangible in our first economic act. We must prove our administration's capabilities. The people must know that this administration can get things done. We must improve the economy of the nation and bring it out of recession. I do agree with this because luckily when we turn around and cut the deal with Sorland today, um, they'll pretty much cover any blunders we have. If we have any. Therefore, I define two important projects for our attention. The H3 Highway Project and the L1 High Speed Railway Project. Mr. Hold repositioned himself on the chair to take a more comfortable posture. The ministry can only support one project at a time with current capacity and budget. Let's move on to the details of each. So which one do you want to hear about first? Uh, let's hear about this high speed rail. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to do the highway project. Your predecessor, Alfonso, has failed in delivering this campaign premise, uh, promise but we can start the construction of this groundbreaking railway project. As you know, our current trains cannot meet the standards of today. As many other countries adopt this new electric engine technology to power up their trains, we fall one step behind. Reports about the newest train in United Cantana traveling at incredible speeds has piqued the business interest. They too want to transport resources and material from Holsor to La Chaven with great speed and efficiency. Okay, agree. We must obtain the high quality of technology of superpowers. This could also empower the businesses and bring investments. Major cities of Sola need more infrastructure to support their growing population. Okay. I do want the technology. We must become part of the internationally competitive arena on the technological developments. Our plan is to upgrade the old L1 line from Holsor to Lechavit. It will transform to a high-speed rail. Let's look at the map here. Nice. Okay. Yeah, that's really nice. I think before it didn't pop out like that, so that's nice. I looked at the map Gus was pointing at Holsor while Simon was looking attentively. The planned construction starts right here at the capital. It will go to Enrica first. Okay, so it'll go there. And it'll end there. Oh, that's pretty far, actually. I've always been against this because I was just like, well, why would you turn around and, you know, of course, connect these two? I kind of get that, but at the same time, we have a port here. So maybe if we fixed up this area here... You could just bring stuff through the port. But this is actually pretty nice, and it would actually probably create a boom here in Sarna because they're going through um, some agricultural renaissance there. So that could probably be connected, or it'll make it easier to transport things between these two areas. So it's nice. It'll go to Enrica first. And then connect to Gilsword here after which it will reach Lechaven our economic powerhouse after which uh, okay the L1 will significantly boost the economy on the newly linked cities and even the rural areas in between Lechaven is our primary port so the goods unloaded there will be transported to whole sword much faster Ooh, excuse me okay Yes, we should link these rural areas in the middle with the major cities of Swordland. So, yeah, that would definitely help. We're talking about the wealthiest regions and forgetting about Anglin, which needs it more. The mayor of Enrica, 
uh, Curtin Less also requested this project to be prioritized. He looks like, um, what's his name? <laughs> um, the John Smith, I think is his name. I can't remember, but the guy from uh, The Man in the High Castle. <laughs> yeah, he kind of looked like him. Businessmen in the region will be very content, which uh, increases investments and employments. Therefore, I will recommend the L1 High Speed Rail Project. Okay, um, you know, uh, I don't even want to hear about the last one. Um, again, I did the other, um, I did the other project in the demo. So, if you want to check out what happens if I do that, then you can see that on there. Or also from the live stream, because on the live stream, I played the Democratic left, so I'll be on the opposite end of this. I want to hear the other project. Oh no, I didn't want to choose that. Crap. Well, oh, we're here. So, the A3 project aims to improve the abysmal state of the road network in the Anglin region bordering Agnolia. The area is home to several million Angno Sordish and, and Sordish who feel neglected. There are no proper highway connections to and from England. The mayor of Arvory, Eric Neal, has been asking for a bigger budget to develop the regional infrastructure. He told us that even trucks are having a hard time traveling through the main roads. The increased traffic is causing trouble for people commuting in and out of the region. Um, uh, not sure if this region is a priority for us right now. Uh, let us look at the map. Sure. Lily is what's going at Lechaven. The H3 Highway route starts here and leads to Linkurg. So it starts here, heads up there. From there, it goes all the way to Avery. Arvory. As a result, the road network towards the, the Agnolian capital stall port will improve uh, substantially. She paused and leaned forward in her chair. I saw the central government continuously neglect the Agno sort of dominated regions when I was mayor. Is this administration going to continue that kind of negligence? All right, you're being a little, a little forceful there, Elias. Uh, let me see. It makes little sense to put investments in such a remote region, you know? I just don't think we should do it right now. Maybe later when we have more money. That is why we should initiate the L1 project. It has to be pointed out that the highway would be less beneficial in the near term. I have to disagree. It will increase the speed of transportation throughout the region. Our citizens will be quite pleased if we successfully accomplish this. Besides, if we enter trade talks with Agnolia, they will see this investment as a positive sign. I've settled on a decision. Excellent. What will your final choice be, Mr. President? I have decided on the L1 high-speed rail project to improve the connection between our most productive cities. The right choice, Mr. President. The negotiations will begin in the middle of this year. You will be able to, reward, to award the contract to a corporation of your choice. The ministry estimates that the entire construction will finish in two years if every step going forward is executed successfully. Okay, good. Is there anything else? This should be all, Mr. President. See you soon, Mr. Rain. Have a nice day, Mr. President. Evening settled on the beautiful coastline of Lechaven. All right, so we have made some nice big decisions here. We've decided on the railway project between Holsort and Lechaven to boost our economy and help pull us out of this recession. So in the next video, we will turn around and look at this, invest in Arcasian company stocks. This is new. This was not a thing in the um, previous I mean the demo so this is going to be interesting but i hope you like this video if you like the video like the video if you want to see more content like this please subscribe i have a ever-growing list of things that i'm playing and list of things i plan on playing and yeah i hope you enjoyed the content so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one